When I was an intern at Nickelodeon Studios, I always used to view cartoons before everybody else did. Just to make sure if it was okay, and there was no flaws or anything that happened. It was a new episode of The Fairy Odd Parents, and this one was called Power Pals Emotion Commission. So I had just started the episode, and the episode seemed to be pretty good. No flaws whatsoever. So when I took it to the, into the room for everybody to see, I didn't expect anything to happen other than what I had seen. Boy, was I wrong. We went to the room and started the tape. I walked out for a few minutes because I was expecting a call from the manager. He wasn't there that day because he was at a meeting. He called and we talked about the business for about a half an hour. When I came back in, everybody looked at me, some questionably and some angrily, and I didn't know what was going on. They put in the tape and it took a while to load, but when it did, the title card came up as Timmy's Wish. Surrounded by missiles and nuclear warheads, military tanks and landmines, radiation symbols as well, I know that that was not what I had named it, so I was just confused as well. The show started off with Timmy in the bedroom, once again being babysat by Vicky for four days as his parents were out of town. She had locked him in his own bedroom, and the windows were shut tight and the door was barricaded, and there was even nowhere to go. He was born and he was developing cabin fever, so Timmy just sat on his bed, talking to Cosmo and Wanda. I wish I had a lot of video games, toys, and Crimson Chin comics, Timmy shouted. Cosmo and Wanda gave him all that he had asked for. Wanda simply replied with, Timothy, have you ever thought of wishing for world peace? It's worth a try. Now I was really confused. Because I had never written any of this, so I thought that somebody had pulled a prank on me and had changed the discs, so whatever they had, fine. Anyway, Timmy then replied, No, but I thought if it's something I wish I had. The audio then after was cut out, almost as if it was censored, but Timmy was mouthing out the words. Something to create chaos, and then there was poof cloud, and Timothy and Timmy had a bunch of knives and various sizes. Thanks, he replied gratefully, before quickly falling asleep. Cosmo and Wanda were confused by what they granted and asked themselves, why would he need a box of knives? Then they, when they fell into the fishbowl as goldfish and went to sleep, I was too confused now by what to think of it all, but I kept watching. The next scene showed Timothy suddenly waking up and jumping out of the window, which was now open for some reason, but it looked like it was forced open. It faded to the darkness. A two hours later title card came up, and then he came back with a weird red liquid on his body, but it was too dark to see anything, including his face. The way he we knew it, it was liquid because there were some dangerous drops around him trickling down his face, and his body was already tiny red streams. Anyway, he broke open the window and went to the bedroom, cleaned off the liquid, and then went back to bed and fell asleep. The next scene made me gag. It was Francis, dressed, drenched in pool of his own blood, and his face was cut open. His brains and his eyes were removed with very little precision, and his tongue was ripped off, and he had multiple bruises on his neck leading to the conclusion that he was choked to death. At first, uh, he had multiple bru we at first he had multiple bruises leading us to be choked to death on his stomach, caved into his bloody in the skin with initials TT. The picture looked realistic and it was sickening. Just like looking at his carcass as known, Timmy's initials were TT, so we can guarantee it was him. A couple of interns left while the others stayed. The second scene, holy shit, was even worse than the last one. The head had been cruelly chopped off with for the arteries and veins, just staying out still. The arms and legs had been slit open with blood vessels piled on top with his hands and feet cut off, and the same initials on the stomach, his ribs, and by the looks of it, were broken with a sledgehammer and blood from the newborn holes of his lungs were sleeping out. My guess was that his ribs were broken and first and was suffocated to death because of it. 
He was then caught up. This person without a doubt was Mr. Crocker. We all know it was Timmy because it seemed that the two victims were Timmy's enemies. The pictures were so realistic and much more people ran out, leaving just four in the room. When it was morning Tim and Timmy woke up, the knives were drenched in blood, and on the news, the murders that Timmy had committed were featured. Cosmo and Wanda looked at the news, and then they looked at Timmy, where they had no suspicion it was him, so he had nothing to worry about. It went on like a regular day, except for, of course, without bullying. But instead, there was a substitute until there was a new teacher, when it was reached at nighttime. The fairies went to bed, and so did Timmy. By now, I was nervous. The entire episode had been like this, and it was now almost over. Timmy then came back with more blood on him than ever. By now, you could probably know that it's blood. In a couple of scars, after he cleaned himself, he went to bed. The next day, Vicky was on the news, and the picture was so horrifying. I lost my lunch. She had been brutally tortured with whips and chains, and her whole body had been cut up into pieces with body parts lying around a place, and it was so realistic. I couldn't hold it in anymore. Nobody suspected that a 10-year-old would do this. Nobody expected him. That night, Timmy was going out for the window when he saw a bunch of police cars and helicopters. Behind him, Wanda spoke. We kn I know it was due, Timmy. We I've watched you, and so I called the police. Timmy then sat down crying in the dark and red mascara ruined the tears on the bed. Then he looked up at the screen and his eyes were in detail, the creepiest you've ever seen. They looked like they were animated heavily, not very realistically, but not in CGI either. Then he whispered in an enormous tone, Tell no one what I did. Then he took a pistol and then dropped the folded note. He shot himself and when the police broke in, they opened the folded note. It said, you think I was murdering people? That's small talk. If I was murdering people, you would all be gone. That was when the episode shut off. I went to grab the disc and then looked at it, but if it was my disc, it somehow was corrupted and thus this was worthless. Still, I was able to see the disc rather than see the episode again, but I didn't know why it didn't corrupt the first time it was shown. The creepiest part was the disc, my name and signature and everything. And then around the time the actual episode aired, I, of course, had to redo it, and it ran perfectly, no different from what I have watched originally. That episode will never be, a, be out of my mind, and will always know what happened to Corrupted, or who Corrupted. Those photos weren't the photos of the episode. And that, my little pretties, was um, Timmy's Wish. A Fairly Odd Parents Lost Episode Creepypasta. Um, my final thoughts on the story? Okay. Um, this actually might be an unpopular opinion or something. But I think this is an okay story. I know some people may think that this story sucks. But I find this to be an okay story. And... Yeah, I mean, I know it's cliched, and I know it has a really cliched storyline and all that, but I do find some parts of it to be, well, rather interesting. I mean, it's probably an unpopular opinion, because I know Shadow Reader actually reviewed this, and he gave it his final thoughts on that story. And I, I mean, I think I remember he narrated it back on his old channel before it was terminated, and he re-uploaded it last year. I mean... Well, I could definitely say that, yes, I know this is cliched, but the story is okay. I mean, I'm not a major fan. I didn't really care for this story that much, but it was an alright story. I mean, yes, it's cliched, but I find this one to be, you know, rather interesting. And, yeah, we're gonna get to that. I guess I kind of remember narrating this one back in 2019. I don't remember. Maybe I might have. I don't know. Maybe if you guys were around since then, maybe you could let me know. I don't remember if I narrated this story or not. I might have, but I don't remember. But I will have to say right now, the cliches of, you know, I was an intern in Nickelodeon Studios, having this VA DVD with you, the hyperlistic blood, gore, and all that. I mean, I get that it's cliched, but I really didn't find this story to be bad. Well, it still kind of sucks at times, but... 
I find this to be an okay story. Maybe that might be just me, but you guys can have your own opinions on this story. I mean, Tim Timmy getting his revenge on the people he hates, such as Francis the Bully, uh, Mr. Crocker, and Vicky the... Well, and if you could definitely say, um, I honestly, this would honestly be a messed up episode that I've ever seen. Like, if you've watched, um, Enough Fairly Odd Parents, then yeah, you can honestly picture this being the case. But yet again, who really is to say? Like, I like how the story kills off Francis, which is, happens to be, um, Timmy's bully, which, I mean, in the later seasons of Fairly Odd Parents, we don't get really to see, um, well, Francis a whole lot. So, I guess that's a positive I would have to say that I really do like about that, is that we get to see what happens with Francis. I mean, I know we don't get to see Francis a whole lot in the later seasons, so, yeah, there's definitely that. There's definitely that that I can definitely state in my own personal thoughts of this. So, yeah. That's one thing I would have to say that I really enjoyed was, you know, seeing our, you know, the fact that Francis gets what he like, what he get deserves. I like the concept of the story of how it all, you know, had and all that. I like the concept. I mean, the grammar was all right. Maybe the grammar could be maybe fixed up a bit of parts. Like, I mean, I mean... The grammar wasn't terrible. I mean, there was like parts of the story that just were kind of hard to read at times. Maybe if you read as much creepypastas as I do, maybe that might be just me personally. I don't know. Maybe you guys might have something. I don't know. You guys could probably, you know, express how you guys feel about this story because you guys might have your own opinions. Now, let's get on to the parts of the story that I did not specifically like. Specifically like, sorry if I mispronounce a word. Because I'm not really good with pronouncing words unless someone reads them to me. Another thing I would have to say that I really wasn't a fan of. I mean, like I said before, the sentence structure in the grammar was not that great. I mean, it does need some working and fixing up. As well as, you know, some, some of the paragraphs too need to be, you know, separated in a sense. I mean, some of the paragraphs need to be separated. I mean, some of them I had trouble reading because of it. So... Yeah, I just kind of want to mention that in case if you guys are all, well, curious in a sense. But, you know, I just have to state that in case you guys are wondering. Now, another thing I would have to say was, well, I could definitely say that it was cliched and all that. Like, like there was like blood, gore, cliche and all that. I think normally that wouldn't ruin a creepypasta. But for some reason, I didn't think this one was that bad. The story could have been, you know, worse, but, I mean, at least the story did have somewhat of a, a potential of somewhat being good, but I would suggest maybe otherwise. Maybe that might be just me, but you guys might have, you know, your own thoughts and opinions on that. Maybe you guys might have something, you know, else on it, maybe, but I really don't know, to be honest. That's just, um, me, though. You guys might have your own opinion. Now, I mean, I really wish that this, the paragraph structure of the story needs, you know, could be fixed up and all. But, I mean, it wasn't terrible or anything. I mean, the story does need some, well, fixing up and all that. But, yeah, that's probably just me. But I really don't know. Maybe you guys might, you know, remember something. I don't know. But, you know... I that's probably just me, but you guys might have um your own personal opinion. But like I'm gonna say right now, this is simply my own personal opinion. If you happen to disagree with me, that's fine too. We're all entitled to our own opinions regards to these creep pastas, and this is simply my own personal thoughts. My final rating of this story would have to be, I guess I'm gonna give this one a four out of ten. Not great, not bad, but. I mean, the story did have somewhat of a good concept, although I know it sounds cliched and all. But I wasn't really a fan of this story of its own self. That's just me, but you guys might have your own opinion on this. You guys can feel free to leave me what your thoughts are on in the comments below. So, 
I guess with that being the case, and with that being said, that's it. 4 out of 10. Not good, not perfect, but it was an alright story. Maybe it needs to be fixed up, and yeah, I will agree, it needs to be fixed up, but it's not terrible, per se. So, anyways, what did you guys think about this um, creepypasta? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Also, what we have done person to help make this story a lot better? Feel free to leave me now with your thoughts down in the comments below. I'm the um, Queen of Lions. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you happen to be brand new here on this channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because I make brand new videos every single day. Don't forget to ring the notification bell to when I upload so that way you guys will not miss an upload. And as always, please roll the outro because I'm out.